We all know that the Cybermen are one of the most popular and iconic villains in Doctor Who history. They are also my personal favourite, and always will be. I love their concept, their design, and their voices. You belong to us. You shall be like us. Despite their popularity though, it could be argued that they are very rarely utilised effectively within the revival. So much so in fact that I believe that they have almost entirely forgotten their own prime directive, to the extent that I often hear them mistaken by casual fans for nothing more than robots. But who has caused the Cybermen to become so generic? Well sit back, relax, and subscribe, because that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. <laughs> In 1963, a man named Kit Pedler was discussing with his wife about what would happen if a man was augmented so much by prosthetics that you couldn't tell whether he was a man or a machine, due to the recent, at the time, development of spare parts surgery, which allowed for hearts and lungs to be swapped out for mechanical alternatives. Three years later, after appearances on Tomorrow's World and Horizon, he was hired by the BBC to be a scientific advisor on the 1966 Doctor Who serial The War Machines, which led to him eventually writing The Tenth Planet alongside Jerry Davis. Pedler originally envisioned the Cybermen as a race of space monks, but this idea was quickly abandoned after being convinced by Jerry Davis to base them more around spare parts surgery. And with that, the Cybermen we know and love were born. Much like the Daleks before them, the Cybermen immediately struck a chord with the technophobic audience of the 1960s, due to their primary directive being the conversion of all humanity into Cybermen. This popularity guaranteed that they would have subsequent appearances throughout the rest of Classic Who's run. In fact, they were so popular during the late 1960s that they were often used in place of the Daleks, due to their creator Terry Nation trying to create a Dalek spin-off show during Patrick Troughton's time as the Doctor. But by the turn of the millennium, Doctor Who and by extension the Cyberman had become a bit of a joke. Especially because the Cyberman had become known for being easily defeated by pretty underwhelming means, including gold, <laughs> their own weapons, ah! Raston warrior robots, ah! and even a certain type of flower. Oh, I wish I was making that last one up. Obviously a villain with this many trivial weaknesses would never be taken seriously by a modern audience. The Cybermen needed to change, the Cybermen needed to be reinvented. In fact, I would go as far as to say the Cybermen needed to be upgraded. An upgrade they did. We have been upgraded. When it came time for the Cybermen to be modernised for the revival of the show, it was crucial that the core element of them being converted humans, whose goal was to quote unquote save people from their own humanity, was maintained while simultaneously making them more relevant for the 21st century. This was done in the 2006 two-parter Rise of the Cybermen and Age of Steel, by having the new Cybermen be from a slightly more advanced parallel universe to our own instead of them being from our twin planet. This made the Cybermen even more relatable than they already were, as now they acted as a twisted look into our own future, evolving from the very technology we use in our everyday lives such as earphones and even phone service providers. Despite all these updates though, at their core, these Cybermen were still just regular people who were forced into giant metal suits. A fact that is best displayed in this scene, where a Cyberman talks about its wedding. A scene which is not only heartbreaking, but also terrifying. Where's Gareth? He can't see me. It's unlucky the night before. It is for this reason that I believe this is the only story to truly nail the iconic Handleheads. No other story in the revival, except for maybe one, ever really delves into how tragic the Cybermen really are. Luckily for us though, the idea of them being humans trapped inside Titanium was maintained relatively well throughout the rest of the Russell T Davis era, despite them being made to look like total pussies when fighting the Daleks at Doomsday, as well as beginning the trend of relying on gimmicks in order to make them interesting, something I will return to later. Unfortunately, it is with the Cyberman's second redesign that more issues with their design, characteristics, and most importantly motivation, start to become apparent. Oh, and before you mention it in the comments, I know that the Cybermen appeared a couple of times in the Stephen Moffat era prior to their big redesign in 2013, but most of those were mainly just cameo roles, and the ones that weren't were closing time, so you'll forgive me for not including it. Although one thing I will say is that looking back, I really hate that the Cyberman manages to reassemble itself on its own and start attacking Amy in the Pandorica Opens, as that scene laid the groundwork for one of my biggest issues with the next iteration of the monster. I am Iron Man. 
Despite Nightmare and Silver being somewhat of a guilty pleasure episode for me, I acknowledge that it began the trend of Cybermen becoming more robotic, which is a trend that I would argue still persists to this day. A big factor in this shift is their new design, which is more reminiscent of an Iron Man rather than a Cyberman. Their body horror characteristics have been reduced even further this time too, as now even their limbs could detach and reattach at will. Now to be fair, you could make the argument that the Cyber Cybermen were just as robotic, however at least there it was made obvious that there were still organic components, like in the aforementioned wedding scene, whereas now they can rotate their heads the full 360 degrees and recover from laser shots no problem, leading to this design forever being thought of as an upgrade too far in the eyes of many. But in my opinion, the biggest crime these Cybermen commit is erasing the villain's core motivation. But first, a question for all you diehards in the audience. What is a Cyberman's goal? Answer. To upgrade humans, right? That's basically what the entire video has been about thus far. Okay, then follow up question. What is a Moffat era Cyberman's goal? Because throughout his run on the show, he seems to have presented us with three very different answers that do not work in tandem. In World Enough in Time and the Doctor Falls, they seem to want to upgrade humans until they don't, but let's not worry about that. Simple enough though, right? A small group of Cybermen working their way up a ship with numerous flaws, upgrading as they go in order to increase their armada. In Dark Water and Death in Heaven though, they seem to only be interested in upgrading the dead, which I'll admit is a pretty cool concept, however it still doesn't align with what the Cyberman's purpose has been up until this point. Although granted, you could make the argument meant that this was the desire of Missy rather than the Cybermen themselves, but that just opens up a whole new can of worms about the Cybermen often being relegated to the Master's lackeys, but that's a topic for another day. Then, if we circle back around to these Cybermen's first appearance, Nightmare and Silver, a converted Webley informs us that the Cybermen can now upgrade any organic components, including Time Lords. Now some people believe that this was merely the inevitable evolution of the Cyberman's goal, to upgrade humans, as once they finish upgrading humans, what else can they do? However, I disagree completely. In my opinion, it makes them far less unique and relatable. As now they can upgrade anything, why bother having them upgrade humans anymore when they can just upgrade Time Lords instead, a race that by all accounts is genetically and intellectually superior to us. Which again, makes them less relatable as the entire point of the Cybermen, up until this point, was to be an allegory for humanity's over-reliance on technology, a theme that is more relevant now than it ever was in the 1960s, with shows like Humans on Channel 4 really capitalising on this concept to great success. But despite this growing relevance, the wise old sages at the BBC didn't think it was an interesting enough concept for Doctor Who, leading to the final spark of what made the Cybermen special being snuffed out in their most recent appearances in the show. Oh, you mean robots? Despite Chris Fumnall having a questionable past with the Cybermen, to say the least, the first Cyberman to appear within his tenure actually shows signs of promise. In the series 12 episode The Haunting of Villa Diodati, we get introduced to Ashad, also known as the Lone Cyberman, who was the result of a botched conversion giving him the appearance of a Cyberman, albeit showing more teeth than usual. However, he still retains his emotions, leading to him feeling happy, sad, and even vengeful at multiple points within the episode, showing that this era, unlike some of its predecessors, was able to show the duality of the Cybermen rather well. Unfortunately though, this episode wasn't written by Chibnall, leading to a complete U-turn in the lone Cyberman's characterization in the finale, as now his prime directive was to have the Cybermen ascend to be mechanical beings without any need for organic components, something that we actually see in the Timeless Children. My new Cyber Warriors are purged of organic components. Now I don't think I need to tell you how stupid this is, but to the three of you in the back who may not have heard me say it the first 15 times, I want you to listen really carefully. The Cybermen are organic. I mean, at least with the Cybermen in the Moffat era, they have to use some organic parts in order to create Cybermen, even if they aren't human parts, which is my preference. But this just makes them blatant robots. And no, the fact that the Master calls this out does not make it any less dumb. It's like when Deadpool pokes fun at some of the plot holes within his films. Just because he makes jokes about them, doesn't mean that they are no longer plot holes. And hey, remember when I said this? As well as beginning the trend of relying on gimmicks in order to make them interesting. Something I will return to later. Well here's the payoff to that. In the same finale that Chibnall decides that the Cybermen want to be robots, he also gets the Master to convert some Time Lord corpses into super special Cybermen that can regenerate endlessly, which as an aside makes no sense as surely Time Lord regeneration energy is no longer usable once a Time Lord dies. I mean, at least this plot twist allowed for the return of Cyberman body horror is what I would say if we actually saw any of the experimentation these bodies underwent. Obviously, I'm not asking for corpses to get cut up on a Tea Time family show, but a cutaway with some screaming would have been nice. As is, it's just dumb, and validates the idea that I mentioned earlier that the writers behind the show at the moment don't think the Cybermen are interesting enough on their own. 
Now, obviously I disagree with this sentiment, but what would I do differently? Honestly, I would just put the Cybermen in new scenarios. What about a Cyberman story where the Cyber Leader is an elitist who only wants to convert the most physically and mentally proficient humans? What about a story where the Cybermen are a commodity like in Humans, which I mentioned earlier? Or a story in which they're marketed as prosthetics to help wounded soldiers, only to eventually evolve into Cybermen? I'm just spitballing here, but I definitely think there are new things that can be done with the Cybermen. I mean, it's not as if the Daleks are made into something other than space Nazis, depending on the story. They are always the same at their core, with the story changing to accommodate for them, rather than the other way around. But to give you a bit of a break from my, let's face it, pretty annoying voice, I figured I'd invite a special guest to talk about the issues he has with Cybermen. So, for one video only, it's Mr. Jack Wolf! There was something I found hauntingly fascinating about the Cybermen when experiencing their 2006 reintroduction. This was the first time I'd ever heard of a Cyberman, yet they struck a chord with me and soon became one of my favourite Doctor Who villains. One thing I liked was their constantly evolving design, especially throughout the classic series, and I remember studying the various concept art and prototypes for the new series featured in the Radio Times. I always looked forward to the next Cyberman stories, but consistently I found myself disappointed. Time after time it felt like the Cybermen were relegated to a boring robot army, often secondary to some greater villain, and on top of that, their design stayed largely the same for seven years, only to then be replaced by an Iron Man lookalike. And even now, those 2006 designs are still featuring in episodes. My personal favourite design has always been those from the Moon Base and Tomb of the Cybermen. Those blank faces and that electronic voice make these Cybermen so creepy. These stories also feature some of their best characterization. They're presented as very cold and logical, achieving their goals by whatever means possible. And like nameless robots, they feel like hyper-intelligent yet emotionless converted beings. When you make the Cybermen into tin soldiers, they lose their edge, their creep and that body horror. I know that I got a bit more heated in this video than usual, but in truth, that's just because I love the Cybermen. My first modern story was a Cyberman story. My first classic story was a Cyberman story. One of my first Vigor sets was the Age of Steel Cyberman set. My shower towel was a Cyberman shower towel. And as you saw earlier, I was at the Doctor Who experience on the last day where they all had Cyberman walking around, as well as a viewing area in the main exhibition in celebration of the release of World and Evan Time and the Doctor Falls. So it pains me when these guys are misused, especially considering that they are so integral to the show's iconography. It's not all doom and gloom though. From what I understand, the spin-off media has been doing some great things with the Cybermen. And if not, I'll always have fan works. And who knows? Maybe if we get a new showrunner, they may finally do the Cybermen justice. We will just have to wait and see. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.